Hello, I'm Ralph Cable of the Electronics for the Inquisitive Experimenter YouTube channel. In my video on measuring impedance, I featured a Nano VNA, an MFJ 259C, and a rig expert to measure impedance. In that video, I measured capacitors and inductors and my funky test load and then compared the results. Well, the VNAs were dead on, well, of course. The MFJ 259C was woefully inaccurate. The rig expert was pretty impressive using the off the shelf calibration, but we can do even better. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how we can measure impedance with accuracy rivaling the Nano VNA using the Rig Expert. I will be using a borrowed AA600. If you have questions or comments, please feel free to add a comment to this video. If you find this video helpful, please click on the like and don't forget to subscribe. Well, let's start with a brief introduction to the problem we face in measuring impedance. In short, everything affects impedance measurements. And there are two specific applications of this that I'm going to address today. The first is to measure impedance at the rig expert connector itself. Now, this rig expert covers 0.1 to 600 megahertz. And it is impossible for a device such as this to achieve high accuracy across this entire range for what we pay. This is especially true as we start reaching higher frequencies. The higher the frequency, the more difficult it is to measure impedance with accuracy. Well, the off-the-shelf calibration of the rig expert works pretty well for ballpark measurements of impedance as demonstrated in my video on measuring impedance. If you haven't seen that one yet, there's a link for it up in the corner for you. Sometimes, however, we have a very specific frequency we have to make our measurement at, such as like with an antenna or some other fixed frequency device. So here's a case in point. Suppose this little black box is a device that is part of some system which is intended to be operated at 146 megahertz. We need to know what its impedance is in order to properly match the system to this device. Now, I've already carefully measured the impedance of my little black box at 146 megahertz using my VNA. The VNA tells me that its impedance is 1.11 minus 16.767J at 146 megahertz. That means that we have a magnitude of impedance of 16.804. Now, Let's put this on my borrowed rig expert and measure its impedance at the same frequency. It tells me that the impedance is 1.2 minus 11.9 J at 146 megahertz. This gives me a magnitude of 11.96 ohms. Well, these seem pretty close but like our measured impedance video, let's put some real numbers to it. As compared to the VNA measured results, the magnitude of the measured impedance is off by minus 28.8%. Now, I'll show you how to improve this a little bit later, but first, I'm going to address the other application for what I'm going to be doing here today. The off-the-shelf calibration of the rig expert or any antenna analyzer is at the connector on the instrument itself. Transmission line realities tells us that putting any cable or adapter between the calibrated measurement device and the item to be measured will change the apparent measured value. The component may be highly capacitive but may appear to be inductive at the end of even a seemingly short length of cable. For this second example, I'm going to begin with the same little black box. Let's say that this represents an antenna out at the end of a feed line. And we want to measure its impedance so that we can create a matching network to get a better SWR. Now, remember that this little black box has a measured impedance of 1.11 1 
minus 16.767J at 146 megahertz according to my VNA. I have a 36 inch or 91.4 centimeter piece of coax between the rig expert and my little black box. And this is representative of whatever feed line you might have between your antenna and the rig expert. Well, let's see what the rig expert tells us the impedance of our little black box is. It reports an impedance of 4.0 plus 50.7J at 146 megahertz. Now, we know that the little black box is actually capacitive, and yet here we're being told that it is inductive. The impedance magnitude is 203% of the real impedance magnitude, and it's inductive to boot. So how do we actually measure the impedance of this little black box at the end of our feed line and get it right? And this leads us to the solution, user calibration. And yes, this is a native ability of the rig expert. One of my concerns was that I might somehow mess up the factory loaded calibration by messing around with this user calibration. Well, the good news is that you need not worry about that. The factory loaded calibration of your rig expert will remain intact. This calibration process is only valid for the center frequency and span that you choose when you set up the rig expert to make your measurement and can be discarded at any time. If you change either the center frequency or the span or range at any time, the calibration is discarded. The first step is to procure a short and open and a load to use in doing this calibration. I'm going to be using these relatively inexpensive ones. The next step is to make sure the rig expert is set to the right characteristic impedance for the system. To do this, we press the X or cancel button until we get back to the main menu. We now press the zero key to enter the settings menu. We press the zero key again to get to page two of the settings menu. Look for this system impedance entry. Make sure this is set to your system impedance. If this needs to change, we press the six key repeatedly to rotate through the options. In most cases, this is going to be 50 ohms. If you haven't made any changes, you can press the X key to exit. If you have made changes, then press the check mark key to accept the changes and update the rig expert settings. We now get to set the display format. I'm going to choose the Smith chart because I'm going to be measuring impedance. To do this, I press and hold the F key and then the five or Smith key. The next thing we get to do is set the center frequency and range or span of the measurement. I'm going to set this one up to cover the US amateur radio two meter band, which runs from 144 to 148 megahertz. This means a center frequency of 146 megahertz and a range or span of four megahertz. The easiest way to do this is to press the zero key to bring up the amateur bands menu. Press the zero key again to get the second page of this menu where the two meter band resides. Then we select the two meter band by pressing the two key. The alternate way to do this is to set the center frequency by pressing the two frequency key, enter the center frequency in kilohertz, and then press the check or OK. Then we set the range by pressing the three key. Here we enter the entire span or 4000 kilohertz and press the check or OK key. You will now see 146000 plus or minus 2000 kilohertz on the left side of the screen and the Smith chart on the right. We are now ready to move ahead with calibration and measurement. Well, the good news is that the process is absolutely identical regardless of whether we are calibrating it at the connector on the rig expert itself or at the end of a feed line some distance away. 
by way of demonstration, I will step through the process at the connector on the Rig Expert itself and measure the same little black box I measured before. Step 1. Hold down the F key and press the 8 Cal button. The calibration menu will appear. Connect an open standard to the Rig Expert's connector and then press the 2 key. Wait for the Rig Expert to complete its scan. Step 2. Hold down the F key and press the 8 Cal button again. The calibration menu will appear. Connect the short standard to the Rig Expert's connector and then press the 3 key. Wait for the Rig Expert to complete its scan. Step 3. Hold down the F key and press the 8 Cal button yet again. The calibration menu will appear as before. Connect the load standard to the Rig Expert's connector and then press the 4 key. Wait for the Rig Expert to complete its scan. Step 4. Hold down the F key and press the 8 Cal button yet one more time. The calibration menu will appear again. Press the X exit key to accept the calibration and exit the calibration mode. At this point, the measurement screen is displayed with the CAL displayed in the lower left-hand corner indicating that the calibration has been applied to this measurement. Any change in frequency or span will immediately remove this calibration. Step 5. I will do my usual calibration sanity check by scanning the load standard that I have not removed yet. You can see here it reports a perfect 50 plus 0J impedance, so we are ready to go. Now, let's measure our little black box. I disconnect the load standard and connect my little black box directly to the Rig Expert. I press the check or OK button to initiate a scan. When the scan is complete, we press and hold the F key while we press the one data key to see the measured impedance. The Rig Expert reports an impedance of 1.1 minus 16.8 J, which gives us a magnitude of 16.836 ohms. Now this differs from the VNA measured value by a mere 0.19%. Wow, this is pretty doggone impressive. You gotta love this. Now I'm going to go through the same process at the end of my 36 inch or 91.4 centimeter cable. And this begins with discarding the current calibration data. We do this by pressing and holding the F key while pressing the 8 Cal key to enter the calibration mode. We press the 5K to invalidate the calibration and then the check or OK key to apply this. We connect the feed line to the connector on the Rig Expert and go through the entire calibration process as before, except the calibration standards are connected to the far end of the feed line. Having done all of this, I connected the little black box to the end of the feed line and initiated a scan. So, what does the Rig Expert report for an impedance? 1.2 minus 16.9 J. That gives us a magnitude of 16.943. Well, how does this compare to the VNA? It only differs from the VNA by 0.82%, and this at the end of a cable that is 0.675 wavelengths long. Well, now you're ready to measure impedances with confidence with your rig expert. If you found this video helpful, please click on the like and subscribe to the channel. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, toodaloots.